Uh, welcome to this uh, class. Uh, today we are going to begin uh, a new uh, chapter, uh, which is a particle filter. A particle filter, like a Kalman filter or a hidden Markov model, uh, is a probabilistic uh, estimation uh, technique, uh, and it is also a recursive uh, estimation uh, technique of un unknown uh, var var uh, variable or standard, uh, sorry, um, uh, random uh, variable. Uh, the uh, particle filter is a complex uh, uh, estimation uh, technique which uh, take advantage of several uh, existing uh, estimation tools. So before we go deep into the uh, uh, discussion of uh, Kalman filter, uh, sorry, particle filter, uh, we need to summarize uh, this existing probabilistic uh, technique. So I have in mind, uh, first I'll give a brief uh, summary of uh, Bayes' uh, theorem. Uh, then we will discuss about uh, joint probability uh, density uh, function and Markov uh, process uh, because a uh, particle filter uh, is uh, heavily uh, involved uh, in uh, manipulating uh, joint probability density functions. Okay, so we will discuss. and uh, Markov process. Uh, then uh, we will uh, summarize uh, Kalman filter because Kalman filter serves as a springboard uh, to discuss uh, particle uh, filter. Once we have these three in, in place, now we are ready to discuss uh, Kalman, uh, sorry, particle uh, filter. So, first we will discuss a uh, particle filter uh, from a conceptual uh, perspective. We will discuss the conceptual uh, aspect of a particle filter. conceptual aspects of uh, particle filter. We don't discuss uh, mathematical uh, uh, details here, uh, but once we have this uh, conceptual uh, aspects in, uh, in place, you will understand all the subsequent uh, stages and why we need to do some mathematical uh, manipulation. And when we discover this uh, aspect in the mathematical uh, details, then you will immediately know why and uh, why we do the derivation and where we need to uh, stop. So, five, uh, we will sit, uh, derive the uh, particle, uh, particle filter, uh, the particle filter uh, mainly uh, focusing on the posterior probability on the uh, posterior probability of an estimation of uh, interest uh, based on this concept we immediately know uh, what parameter we should be looking uh, for uh, but we will soon discover that the posterior probability is rather uh, a, a, a computationally intensive and mathematically uh, complex expression, so we need to find a mechanism to uh, simplify this uh, expression. For that, we have to discuss uh, important sampling. Okay, important sampling. 
is a mechanism of uh, transforming a continuous uh, probability space uh, onto a discrete uh, probability space to make uh, computation uh, tractable. So finally, even the important sampling has to be uh, simplified. Uh, here we take advantage of um, the autocorrelation uh, function of uh, a posterior probability to even further simplify the, this expression. Okay, so here we are going to use see sequential uh, important sampling. Okay, by this, uh, by this time, we understand the, uh, the main goal of particle filter. We understand the, the steps we need to take uh, into account to derive uh, important sampling and how we can uh, simplify uh, uh, part the, the, the particle filter formulation so that we can implement them uh, in uh, simple uh, or uh, computationally uh, simple uh, devices. Is everything fine so far? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, so let's just begin with a simple uh, introduction. Here in, in our lab, uh, some of you are already uh, involved in uh, using uh, particle filter and uh, Kalman filter to uh, self-localize and self-navigate uh, mobile uh, robots. So I'll begin with what you already uh, know. Now imagine we have a mobile uh, robot and on this mobile robot we uh, have attached a distance uh, meter, a laser based uh, distance uh, estimator. Uh, so for, for now, we are just satisfied with a one dimension or single dimension uh, distance uh, localization. Okay, so this is the distance the, the mobile robot should uh, estimate in order to uh, localize it, uh, itself uh, in the. On the time axis, suppose we take samples uh, at some some intervals and the the, the 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 robot based on whatever information it has on its disposal tries to estimate how far it is from a certain a certain uh, a certain target okay so here for example let's just take only three uh, time uh, instances or uh, sampling instances here we have k minus one K and uh, K plus one. As to the exact position of this robot along this axis at any given time, we have absolutely no device on us to tell us. That the exact location or the precise location of the robot on this on this access is for us hidden or unknown but based on statistical knowledge statistical evidence and measurement so here we have uh, a measurement and up to this point we have some we assume that we have some statistics Statistics pertaining to the, the, the previous measurement we took, the statistics or knowledge pertaining to the speed of the robot. For now, we don't specify, but based on whatever statistics we have up to this point, we can make prediction. We can make prediction about the robot, the robot's location at time k minus 1. Let's call this xp of k. That means P here stands for prediction. Okay, X is the distance, 
the, or the, 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 the position of the, the robot along this, uh, this axial, uh, axis. And K here uh, refers to the prediction is made for, for time K. We assume that based on whatever knowledge we have up to this point, we assume that the robot will be at XP at time K. Okay, so this is for this prediction is made for time for time k. So the actual position of the robot at time k is x k. The prediction we made is x p of k. And at, when k arrives, we take measurement using this uh, uh, distance uh, measurement. And this measurement is erroneous. It in, involves its own uh, uncertainty. And this measurement is xp of k. So at any given time, at least we have these three, three random variables to deal with. We say random variables because at any given time, the evidence we have in our disposal involves a certain uncertainty. Now the question is, how can we mix this two? Okay, how can we mix or take advantage of this two to get the best approximation that refers to x of k. And the best approximation we call s hat of k. So this is the best the best estimation we have of x of k. Okay? So the, the, the main purpose of any estimation technique, including Kalman filter, is to enable the robot estimate its location based on all the statistics and measurement it has at its uh, disposal. Now, in order to mix this independent evidence, they could be dependent or independent, we'll see that uh, later on, in order to mix the evidence we have, we have to make two fundamental assumptions. Two fundamental uh, assumptions. And these are the following. Okay, two fundamental assumptions pertaining to any estimation uh, assignment. The first one is that we believe that from now on we we refer x of t or x of k as a process. Okay? We refer x of k as a process. Simply means this process is a function of time. Okay, it's a function of uh, time. So, pertaining this uh, uh, this process, our first assumption is that the process is not haphazard. It's not arbitrary. In other words, there is a correlation between the past, the present, and the future of the the process. So, the process is. To certain extent correlated with itself. This is the first assumption we have to make to, to do any form of estimation. Without this assumption being valid, it is impossible to make any prediction. The second one is 
the measurement we, 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 we take has something to do with the reality. It reflects the, the reality. Is related to the reality. In other words, it's related to x of k, but it contains its own error. Okay? It contains its own error. So once we have these two assumptions in place, we are ready to make estimation. Now, before we are going to uh, discuss uh, about estimation, we have to uh, digress uh, a little and discuss uh, Bayes' theorem because uh, it is a fundamental uh, approach for, for this specific um, uh, lecture. Okay, Bayes' theorem. Most of you are already familiar with uh, Bayes' theorem. Uh, uh, the reason I uh, mention Bayes' theorem is not because you, you don't know it, uh, but to make an important uh, observation. So if we have two L events, A and uh, B, these are probabilistic events. Probabilistic, and we assume that these two events are uh, statistically dependent, or there is a, a dependency, conditional dependency between them. Probabilistic and even that means the knowledge of one leads us to the uh, knowledge of uh, the other. So Bayes' theorem says that the probability of A given B is defined as the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. And here we have a, a joint probability, and the joint probability is expressed as, can be expressed as probability of uh, B given A times probability of B divided by probability of, uh, sorry, probability of B. This is based on one of the most beautiful uh, probability expressions uh, we have at our uh, disposal. And without this uh, expression, uh, many, many uh, scientific fields would have not come uh, to the, uh, to the uh, point where we uh, find them uh, today. Uh, I'm speaking uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, probability estimation techniques, quantum physics, uh, they all uh, take uh, advantage of this uh, simple expression. But the question is, what does it mean? Uh, what does it mean at all? Uh, so let me give you a, an example. Suppose we want to uh, 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 reason about the condition of the door in our uh, lab here at the Faculty of Computer uh, Science. We want to know whether the door is open or closed. And we want to assign responsibility to one of our uh, researchers. Okay? So here we have person associated with this uh, event. And the person could be uh, Janju, Yanis, uh, Victor, uh, myself, etc. So we want to know the relationship between between this uh, uh, this event. Now the question is the, the 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 behavior of our researchers. We can observe, we can measure, we can do experiments. So for example, here we have. The probability that the door will be open, given uh, Janjun was in the lab, we can we can do experiment. We can measure. So this this is something obtainable by doing some some experiment. The same is true for probability of door is partly open. Person 
the impression is called to run. And so, these are experiments, a uh, 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 probabilistic condition which we can establish by doing some experiment. But what we can do is the following. Suppose one day you come to the, to the uh, lab and you find the, the lab is open and you want to know who is responsible. In other words, we want to know the, the probability that the person is Yanis, given that the door is part to open. There is no mechanism, there is no device on earth that tells you with this one. Even if Yanis confesses that he has left the door open, we may not believe him. Suppose he's done it just for the sake of establishing peace among each other. That means this is something you cannot measure, you cannot observe. There is no mechanism on us that can grant you this probability. But Bayes' theorem enables you to do that. This is the, the, the importance of uh, Bayes' theorem. So, for example, the, the probability that the, 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 uh, given the door is open, that Yanis is, uh, Yanis is responsible for that, we can express as follows. So, the probability we just write now from now on P given D, the, the state of the, 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 the person given the state of the, the door, can be described as B given P and probability of P probability of D. This on this side of the equation, all of them can be observed by doing experiments. The probability that the door is open given uh, uh, Yanis uh, it was in the lab, we can observe for 300 days and see how often this, this happens. The probability that Yanis is in the lab can also be established by doing some experiment. The probability that the door is left open can also be observed uh, uh, doing it by, by doing experiment. So all of them are here measure it. Or we can say observers. So this is the, the, the power of Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem enables you to reason about a hidden variable. This is called hidden. In, in probability, this is called uh, the posterior probability and this is the likelihood. But for other, uh, this distinction is not uh, revealing. So we can say that this is a hidden variable. For our case, later on, this is going to be the, the, the distance or the position of uh, our robot. So this hidden variable, we cannot directly observe, we cannot directly uh, approach, but all the others on the other side of the equation can be uh, determined or can be uh, start. So this is one of the important um, uh, contribution of Bayes' theorem to probability-based uh, estimation. The second uh, aspect we're going to uh, discuss is the uh, joint probability densities and uh, can, uh, uh, joint probability density and uh, Markov process. If we are dealing with two random variables,
and there are uh, depending. If they are conditionally dependent, uh, then everything we wish to know about these two random variables is encoded in the joint probability density function. So the joint probability density function x, y gives us all the information we need about these two random variables and the dependency between them or the relationship uh, between them. For example, p of x we can determine by integrating uh, p x y with respect to y. This is possible. We can also express this uh, joint density function as probability of x given y, probability of y, or probability of y given x times probability of x. We can do lots of manipulations to get specific aspects. But what you need to know here is the joint probability density function contains or encodes all the relationship between x and y. Once we have this, we have everything and we can do um, everything. This is something you need to uh, remember. Another important aspect is the following. Suppose Let's go back to the to the uh, robot's position. Suppose this is x k. From now on, I I will just write I I just use the subscript k to uh, determine that uh, this random variable is with the um, position of the robot uh, at time k. Okay, so this x k. This is xk minus 1, this is xk plus 1, this is x1, and so on. If I have all this observation, and I wish to reason about the, the position of the robot at xk, I'm just interested to know the position of the robot at xk minus 1, and I'm not interested in all the other random variables. This is the, uh, the condition for a Markov uh, process. If I am interested in the position of the robot at time k, all I am interested to know is the position of the robot at k minus 1, and I don't care how it arrives at this state. So if I have, let's say, x as x1, x2, xk. So these are the, the random variables or the sum, the, 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 the observation I made at this uh, distinct time uh, uh, intervals. And if I want to know the point of xk given all the, the, the observation up to xk minus 1, let's just call it k minus 1. Uh, Let's say xk minus 2, x2, x1. So if I wish to determine this conditional probability, what's the probability that the, the position of the robot at time x at time k is xk? Given all this, the, the condition for Markov process uh, enables us to assume that pxk given x k minus 1. So if I have this probability, it's sufficient to determine this one because I'm not interested how the robot arrives at the position at k minus 1. I just need the position it has at that particular point. So this is another important aspect you need to, you need to know. Okay, the third we want to do, the third uh, is the Kalman filter. The Kalman filter is one of the uh, uh, most widely used uh, estimation uh, technique. Uh, I have already uh, uh, 
a lecture video uh, uploaded on YouTube as well as on our uh, university uh, website. So if you wish to know uh, more about uh, Kalman filter, please refer to that uh, video. But uh, we will briefly summarize the Kalman filter because on the basis of this Kalman filter we will build uh, our uh, understanding about uh, particle filter. So if you remember in the beginning we said To reason about the, the position of the robot as it moves along a trajectory in, in, in time, first, based on whatever statistics we have up to this point, whatever statistics, we don't care where these statistics come from, but later on I'm going to uh, show you where these statistics can come from, we can make a prediction. And we call this prediction X p of k, okay? The prediction is valid for the time k. This prediction was made one time before that. That means this prediction is made at k minus one. p indicates that it's a prediction and x refers to the random variable. When the time comes, we make a measurement and this measurement is x m of K. The measurement uh, holds for the uh, time k. Both of them are random variable. But in other words, in both cases, we sense or we suspect that they have something to do with the actual position of the, uh, the, 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 the robot, but also contain some error. So the best estimation, remember, we wish to reason about x of k. This is the actual position of the robot. But we have absolutely no access to this, uh, to this position. But now we have two independent observations. Why do we say they are independent? Simple. When we do the, the prediction, we didn't make any Measurement. So the measurement could have not been affected by the prediction. When the time comes, we could have used any measurement device. And this measurement device is not dependent on XP because XP has already been done. So we say that these two are statistically independent from each other. But we have said that both of them are random variables because if I make, while the robot is not moving and uh, it's uh, at a fixed position, if I make thousand measurements with a highly sensitive device, not all thousand samples will be the same. Okay? So for example here, the, the, the distribution of the samples we get is like this. Okay? So this is the actual position x. We estimate, so sometimes we get this one. So if we construct, if we take really a large amount of uh, measurement, this will be the distribution of the random variable xm of t. This width is very important. This is related to the the Variance of the random variable. The bigger the the, 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 the wider the width, or the bigger the uh, the variance, the more dissimilar are the measurement samples, the measurements we take. That means if they are so dissimilar, then we have every reason not to trust this measurement. So the bigger Bigger the variance, the more dissimilar the more dissimilar are the, 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 the samples. 
and the less should be our confidence in this random variable. The same holds true. If we make thousand predictions, each time we will arrive at different uh, value, and that will also be described by the probability density function. And the width of this probability density function tells us the confidence we should have in, in our uh, prediction. So the, the, the weight we assign, this is very important. The weight we assign to uh, an estimation component when I say estimation component, I mean a, a random variable or uh, evidence So the weight we assign to an estimation component is inversely proportional to its variance. So this is very important. In, in Kalman filter, we say that we have two components, okay? We have xp of t, sorry, xp of k, and we have x m of k. These are the, this, the, the two components we have. So we have to assign weight. Let's say this is alpha 1, or alpha p, and this is alpha m. Provides that alpha m plus alpha p is 1. So we have to mix them in such a way to get x hat of k. Okay? This is the best estimation of the position of the robot, which we cannot grasp. We, can't, we may approach but never touch because it's a hidden uh, bar. So our best estimation, x hat of k, is proportionally described in terms of xp and xm. And we have already put in place here a condition that the weight we assign to this component should be inversely proportional to their variance. But when we say, previously we have said that, The confidence we have in a random variable is inversely proportional to the uh, variance, but confidence is always a relative term. Okay? If I don't have any other source other than the, the measurement, I have to trust the, the measurement because I don't have any other possibility. If I don't have a measurement but uh, only the, the, the prediction, then I have to trust the, the, the prediction. I'm not given any uh, option. I can talk of confidence only in a relative term. So I can say, for example, XP is better than XM or vice versa if I have both. So based Kalman filter take these two conditions to estimate 
the uh, available of interest. So it says, suppose we mix them like this. S P of T plus S M of T. We have said the bigger the variance, the less should be our confidence. That means if the 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 bigger the variance of x of p, the more I should trust xn. So that means I can put, let me use a different color. If this, the, the variance of this is big, so I will trust, because big variance, big weight should be given to xn. If the variance of xn is big, I should express it like this, but we have said that confidence is a relative term, so to normalize this to, I can use so this is a common filter. Now to have a more uh, handsome expression, so this is x m of t, sorry, this is x of k, I confuse k and t, I use k because of uh, in the Kalman, in the uh, particle filter community k is used, in the Kalman filter community usually uh, t is used, so don't worry whether we use uh, k or uh, t, it doesn't matter. So this is the, the, the expression. Now to simplify this expression, suppose I just add the following, okay, this is I'll just drop the, 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 the time index for, for now. Let's just here put a dummy variable like this. xp minus xp. Okay, this is just zero. And now, let's just factor out the, the denominator. So that means sigma m squared plus sigma p squared. So here I have sigma m squared xp plus here I have sigma p square xn. Now because I have uh, filtered out, uh, 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 factored out this one, here I have sigma p square plus sigma m square xp minus xp. So this is uh, the best estimation x hat of, of k. So we can distribute this one. So this is sigma m squared plus sigma p squared. Sigma m squared xp plus sigma p squared xn. So for this one, sigma p squared xp. For this one, minus sigma p squared xp. For this one, sigma m squared xp minus sigma m squared xp. Now we have six terms. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Two of them we can eliminate. Let's say here you see sigma Okay, here sigma p, you see here, sigma p x n minus sigma p, so no, not this one, not this one. Okay, sigma m p x p minus sigma m p x p, you see here. So we can we can remove this. So what we have here is sigma p x n, sigma p x p minus sigma p x p 
So we, we, we should have four terms. One, two, three, four. And now let's just put them, put like terms together. But I think the item 2 and item 3 can also be cancelled together, right? Yes, but I'm not going to do that intentionally, deliberately. Okay, now continuing. So here we have, now let's collect like terms. Here we have sigma, for sigma n, Here we have uh, for sigma n, we have just one, one sigma n, right? So here we have sigma p squared sigma n plus, now we can Okay, here's sigma xp. Sorry, we can use sigma p you can see here and sigma p you can see here. Sigma p, sigma p. You see here sigma p? So here is uh, xm plus, here xp uh, minus. So we can do that. So what we can do, we can remove sigma p square. So for, for, for this sigma p we have xn minus for this sigma p we have xp. Okay? This is it. Now we have we have to take advantage of this one, we have to take advantage of this one. What remains is this one. For sigma p you see here, this is sigma p, this is sigma n, both are positive. So here we have, uh, we can just take sigma, sigma p square plus sigma m square times, what was it? xp here, you see? For here also we have xp. So in most cases we have xp. This one. Okay? Now, if we put this back, so here we have sigma p squared plus sigma m squared over sigma p squared plus sigma m squared times xp plus sigma p squared over sigma p squared plus sigma m squared. And for this, we have xm minus xp. So this is, we don't need this one. So this is the best estimation for for time k. So this is going to be one. So what we have is here xp 
now we can put but uh, k, uh, sorry, yes, so this is k, plus, now let's call this capital K, stands for karma concept, okay, so capital K, here we have xm of k minus xp of k. This is x hat of k. This is small k, it's a time instance. This is Kalman constant, don't confuse. Okay, so this was the Kalman expression. Okay, k being sigma p square over sigma 2, uh, sigma p square plus sigma m square. This is the Kalman formulation. And it makes sense. We begin first with, with the, the prediction. We didn't have uh, any measurement, so we have to rely only on that in the beginning. When we have measurement, we don't have to do everything uh, from, from scratch. We just take the, the difference between what we have and what we get, mix it with the, with the, uh, with the appropriate uh, mixing uh, factor or the common factor, and then we have our best estimation. Okay? So the, 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 the assumption we have made for Kalman uh, expression, remember, is that A, the confidence we have in a random variable or in an evidence is inversely proportional to its variance. The bigger the variance, the less should be our confidence. The second assumption we made is that confidence is a relative term. That means we talk about evidence uh, sorry, confidence when we have uh, alternatives or different uh, possibilities. Now, the problem with Kalman is this plus. So far you haven't asked me why I use this P, uh, this plus. We have mixed the evidence we have using uh, a linear uh, mixture. So we have mixed it linearly, and the, the reason is that uh, we don't have time to uh, derive here. We implicitly assume that the, the both the, the prediction and the measurement contain normally distributed uh, errors. The error contained in both the prediction and the uh, measurement are uh, normally distributed. Um, there is no guarantee that this is the case when uh, the, the, the errors have different uh, probability distributions then this uh, plus uh, sign is no longer uh, valid uh, no longer valid Kalman, uh, sorry, the particle filter takes similar approach but without making any assumption as to the uh, probability density distribution of the different um, evidence uh, we have. So now we're going to uh, go to the uh, conceptual derivation of the uh, particle field. Any, any questions from the class? Any questions? No.